Hi everyone, it's Nicole for Plan with Nicole, and today we're going to be talking about custom filler pages for my quilting and cross stitch projects. I've actually split this into three videos so far just because they are kind of long, and I tried to put them all in one, and it was just uh, way too long of a video. So I'm going to break them down into three at this time. There will probably be more as I add more projects. I actually have more projects. And as I finish up my filler pager, pages, I am using the Bright Fun Classic Filler Paper from the Happy Planner. It's a dot grid paper. I did notice that it is currently sold out at the Happy Planner. If I can find it in stock elsewhere, I will link to it. Basically, you just need something kind of plain. It doesn't even have to really be dot grid. Dot grid is fantastic if you want to be doing something similar to what I'm doing today, which is uh, bullet journaling. Um, that's where I got my inspiration for this project from. I really kicked around several different ideas, and ultimately I settled on bullet journaling style for my quilting and cross stitch ongoing projects. I do a lot of quilt alongs, stitch alongs, things like that. And this helps keep me organized. I've been wanting to do this forever. I do have a video that shows my um, divider pages for those sections in my planner. And I will link to that at the end of this video if you want to check that out. I am using the new journaling stencils from the Happy Planner. I believe these were in one of their recent releases. I want to say the winter release maybe, uh, but I could be wrong about that. I love these so much that I actually went and found some more uh, stencils that I will be sharing with you in an unboxing video that will be out soon. Um, lots and lots of videos coming soon. Kind of had a, a rough week and didn't get a lot of videos edited and out, but I have so much coming for you guys. I have so much filmed. I just need to get it all edited. So I started really kind of small. You can see I put a banner up at the top and with that banner, I this is kind of something I found that worked really well and it inspired me in future filler pages. I am going to trim down one of these quote stickers from the Miss Maker sticker book. As far as I know, this is still in stock at the Happy Planner. They restocked it. I'm so glad they did. I actually picked up another one. I'll talk about that a little bit later, why I needed an additional Miss Maker sticker book. But I'm going to be using this a lot for my crafting type endeavors. So I trimmed it down so that it's the same width as my banner that I stenciled. Now I get smarter about this as I make more of these filler pages, which you'll see in um, some videos coming soon. But it's a little bit, I just traced the banner as is. It's a little longer than my sticker, which is totally okay. I'm actually going to take my Papermate flare pens and I'm just gonna color in my banner with a, a black marker or a gray marker. I can't remember which one I used. Um, and this works out perfectly. I think it really adds a fun touch to the design. Lots of little fun things. This was my first filler page spread that I really liked. I'd actually tried a couple of other little things um, and it just wasn't really working for me. And when I thought, when I saw some bullet journaling videos, I thought, you know, this might work. And then I saw the journaling stencils from the Happy Planner and it all just clicked for me. And so uh, I'm thinking this is really going to be a fun way to create and add some extra content to my planner uh, that's really useful. This is gonna help keep me on track for sure because I have several projects that are like ongoing. I've also signed up for some other quilt kits that are starting closer to the summer, but that, that will be ongoing as well. And I'm, I'm super excited. I just, this is exciting to me to be able to have it all written out and be able to look at it all at a glance and it's fun and pretty. So I did my banner and then I did three of these boxes across and I, I'm going to put these great little circle stickers up at the top. There's tons of them in the sticker book. And then I also thought this measure twice, cut once, which is something that I think to myself all of the time. If you are a quilter, you know this, probably a sewer too. 
um, it's just my favorite little quote. And so we're going to incorporate that into the design. I'm doing kind of a grid. I, I find it funny. Things I enjoyed when I was a scrapbooker, I think I've mentioned this here before, um, I kind of started out as a scrapbooker. I moved to card making, which is my full-time job. I'm a full-time content creator, uh, card content creator here on YouTube. And then I, I've gotten into planning a lot. I've always kept a planner, but decorative planning, oh my goodness, you guys, I love it. Um, so... I just find it funny though that the things I loved in scrapbooking, I'm loving here. I, I love text. I love grids. <laughs> I like things lined up and I'm really following that kind of feel with my spreads. Um, I started to put it here and I don't love it. I think we want to put it down. Um, I'm just checking things right now. I think we want to put it down in the lower right corner. I wanted to share my journey of figuring out what works for me with you guys so that hopefully if you're looking to do something similar, no matter what your hobby is, maybe you're a gardener and you want some fun way to keep track of your gardening this spring and summer, um, there's so many hobbies out there. Even for card making, maybe you do card making, definitely uh, think about how you want to record those kind of things because I think it's super interesting. And I love having a record of that. I have not kept a great record of my card making. I'm kind of keeping it now in my work dashboard planning spreads. My monthly spread is a record of what I've done in the month, which I love because other than that, I just don't have a record. I guess the photos um, on my computer of what I've done each month. But other than that, I don't keep track of it. And so it's really kind of a, a fun thing. So I'm using these circle stickers. I did pick all of the same size to decorate the top of my boxes. I'm going to tell you something dumb I did that I fix when I get to the back side of this particular project. I'm using the inside line of this particular label. Why am I doing that? Um, it should be the outer line, but you know, bear with me. I'm learning. So we're going to do a three by three grid on this first page. And I kind of had to figure that out as I went because I'd already started tracing the boxes here on the front side of my spread on the inside. I did keep that up throughout this entire front so it would be consistent, but I will fix that when we get to the back side of this. This particular project that I am making this spread for is called Moda Blockheads. Um, if you're a quilter and you are also doing the Moda Blockheads weekly um, quilt along, hey, drop me a note in the chat and let, or in the comments, let me know. I would love to hear if anyone else is a quilter and if you follow along with some of those things. Um, but my three by three grid is going to have this awesome little sticker. And I really couldn't decide. I couldn't decide if I should try to put it in a box or not. And I'm glad I didn't. I honestly love how this kind of breaks up the grid and it adds a pop of color. So this is the front of the filler spread. But because I believe that the... I should grab my cheat sheet because I haven't actually filled this out yet. But I have a cheat sheet. Um... Oh, here it is. It is 28 blocks, so it's 28 weeks long, plus there's going to be like eight alternative blocks. I can tell you guys right now, um, if you are quilting, I will share a, a little bit more about that if you want me to. Def just let me know. I am using fig, fig tree fabrics. I love Joanna Figueroa from Fig Tree Quilts, um, and I have a lot of her fabric, so I actually opted to do that. And then I know she's going to release like a setting option for adding, you know, borders and sashing and all that stuff. If you're a quilter, you know. Uh, so I'm probably going to follow along with that. She's not using all of the blocks. So I, I probably, there will be some I skip. But I made room for 28 blocks, 28 weeks on the main part of my spread and on the very back page because I'm using two sheets of filler paper, that's going to be the eight alternatives. So if I choose to use some of those alternative blocks instead of some of the, you know, others, that's going to go there. I just tried to keep it really, really consistent. I, I get faster at this as I go, but, um, you know, for now it took a minute. 
So I'm adding these circle stickers. Now the reason I ordered another Miss Maker sticker book, I run out of these as I am working and going along. And so I just went ahead and picked up another book. I've used a lot of stickers from this book. I will use the stickers. And so I didn't feel bad about picking up another book. I'm also going to grab this Do Something Creative Every Day border phrase sticker. I think it fits really nice right here. My goal with my filler pages is to make it very functional. I've got room for the information I need. My plan is to write the block in each one of these, uh, the date it, it was released, and probably the date I finished. I don't want to leave the Be Happy, Be Bright, Be You on this front page. So I'm actually going to cover this up with one of the colorful boxes, stickers, or colorful shapes. I bet this is the colorful shapes sticker book. Can't remember. I'll have it down in the description. It is, it's colorful shapes. And I am going to just cut that off at the top. I like the little yellow border from the original half circle at the top of the page. But this, I used the lined sticker so that I can write what the project is. So this is where I'm gonna write Moda Blockheads for. 2022 or something to that effect. And then we're going to start with all the block information. And you'll see that I will share photos of this on social media so you can kind of see my progress and process. Working on the inside part of the spread does, re in in does involve, I apologize, a little bit more thought. So I did sketch out my plan and we are going to do a three by four on the left side, and then we'll go back to a three by three on the right side, because on the right side, of course, it's gonna be that front side again that has that half circle. I wish Happy Planner would just come out with basic packs of paper without decoration. I know why they do. Um, I, I'm sure that the paper with decoration sells better, but I think when you actually get to using it, it uh, the basics, are the best because you can add whatever you want to it and you're not limited. The yellow on these, the reason I picked this up is because I felt like it was pretty basic and it wouldn't interfere too much. And it doesn't. I, I work it into the design, but that's just my, my thought process. I did pick up the a colorful dot grid paper pack from the Happy Planner. And in some of my other filler page videos, you're gonna see me using like some pinks and blues from that. And it doesn't have any decoration other than the paper itself is colorful. And I like that a lot because it doesn't limit you quite so much to your design. I am using a pencil to plan out so that I can space things out perfectly. And it's about this point that I'm like, I need to make sure that this design works the way I want. I sketch it out on a scrap piece of paper and then I trace it out. So you're gonna see me trace out all of the bullet journaling blocks. Oh, maybe I'm still doing it wrong. Literally, you guys, I figured it out partway through doing all of my filler pages, but that's fine. Um, doing it this way, so I have the eight journaling blocks on the front when you open the spread, we're going to have 12 on the left side and then eight on the right. That's gonna be 28. That's for my 28 weeks. So it does involve a little math. It does involve a little bit of thought process as far as figuring out um, exactly what you wanna do. I made a few boo-boos on this where I didn't maybe trace things very good and it really bothered me. So what I used here was I'm whiting it out with a white jelly roll pen. It doesn't work great. The pen really shows through, but you guys, I just embrace the imperfection. It's fine. This is only for me. This is how I'm just keeping track of my project. And I had already done all the work for the front of this page. I really didn't wanna go redo it. I could have, I could have undoed all of the, undoed, undid with undo, all of the stickers on the front and redone and redid all of this, but I just decided it's fine. And you're, that's going to be really evident on the very back side of this section in my plant, in my uh, spread, because I make a really bad error. And so I just flat whited it out with white out, which does show up but I decided it's fine. This is my planner. Sometimes you have to cross stuff out. Sometimes things don't work. 
it is okay. I mean, you can kind you can see, I think really see here how the white pen didn't cover up the pen all that well, but I guess it cleans it up good enough. I really want to keep some of that stuff in here for you so you can see my process. I am going to speed up the video. I'm just going to continue to do this and then we will get on to the right side of the spread where I have to change things up a bit. If you guys keep track of your hobbies in something like this, I would love to know. Uh, drop me a note. Oh my gosh, I finally got smart. I knew sometime around here uh, I realized don't trace the inside. You know, sometimes things are so apparent and you just don't see it in the moment. Anyhow, I did try to make sure that there were the same number of dot grid lines in between each row. That means my bottom row is very close to the bottom, but that does allow for enough room to add my circle stickers to each row on my spread. And so this really worked out fine. You're gonna see I'm gonna miss a few circle stickers or maybe about two. I have since got my Miss Maker book. I'd already photographed my pages and everything. And so I just left it because I wanted you to see how it's a work in progress. But I did fill in with the rest of the circle stickers once I received my other sticker book. So I have my right side of the spread and I'm going to take from the large Miss Maker sticker book, Don't Cut Corners. I loved this. I think it's gonna be cute. I have the worst time getting it lined up. I'm, we're gonna flip it upside down, but I'm not gonna cover up my little half yellow, I call it a sun, it looks like a sunshine to me. We're not gonna cover that up. I wanna make sure my scissors and my quote are up high enough that it leaves room for my circle accents on my boxes in the lower right corner, keeping consistent with our front page of this project, I'm going to add another little box sticker. This time it's a sewing machine and it has the word happy. Um, I think this is really fun and it's a great way to add interest with all of these boxes and all this function. Okay, back side of the spread, you guys. Here's my little uh, drawn out, you can see my little scrap drawn out page. Hopefully it's giving you an idea. So we need to do the back side. Again, this is for the extra pages. Um, I went ahead and traced my boxes off camera. This time we're going to put a box center in the center. Um, I wanted to switch it up a little bit, but I still want to keep consistent with the rest of the design so that this entire project really kind of is very similar. But you, can you see where I had to white out that box? I was getting so excited about tracing out my boxes. What in the world, you guys? I literally smacked myself in the forehead when I did that, but again, it's okay. It's not gonna hurt anything. Now, I have this huge space down at the bottom. I opted to do my space down at the bottom to kind of switch it up a little bit. I'm going to trim the ruler off the crafter's ruler because it's not going to fit my design. And I'm gonna put crafter's rule down here at the bottom of the back side of my spread. Then I'm going to surround it with some fun little quilting, sewing type notions, some buttons, some straight pins, a rotary color cutter, a spool of thread. I'm just gonna go through my Miss Maker stickers and find some things that are gonna work to kind of fill out that space. I feel like it needs to be a little bit wider than what it is. And so adding a few little goodies around it will really work nicely. And I'm just gonna go through my sticker books and find some cute stickers. And I am gonna speed this up just a little bit because I spent entirely too long playing around with stickers, trying to figure out what to put where, but you guys will get the idea. <laughs> and then I'm gonna just flip through the project to show you what my two pages look like front and back. Um, I'll do that slower for you. You can get a little sneak peek at some more filler pages, but I love how this turned out. Um, I'm so happy with this project. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it's inspired you and definitely stay tuned for more filler pages for my cross stitch and quilting projects. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. 
If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new planning video. Thank you for joining me and we'll see you next time.